We've all heard about the International Space Station zipping around in space, and some of you may have seen it shoot across the night sky. But what do you really know about it? Here we'll delve into the beginnings, the middle, and even the end of the ISS, and tell you what it's like in the lives of those that, for a time, call it home. Get ready for some truly out-of-this-world information. This is Incredible Facts About the International Space Station. 13. Birth of a Legend 21 and a half years ago, on November 20th, 1998, a module called Zarya was carried into space aboard a Russian Proton rocket that launched from Kazakhstan's Baikonur Cosmodrome. It was part one of a project of international cooperation and exploration unlike any the world had seen before. Then, on December 6, 1998, just over two weeks later, the Space Shuttle Endeavour launched and brought with it the Unity Module. The module was connected to Zarya in orbit, and thus began the construction of one of the coolest objects in space today, the International Space Station. 12. A Combination of Programs so prior to the International Space Station coming into being, the United States had planned another station, the American Space Station Freedom. It had been first proposed back in the 1980s, but budget cuts and overruns in cost saw that freedom was delayed time and again, and the program was cancelled and almost wholly scrapped. That's when it was decided upon to combine what had already been worked on with the Russian Mir-2 programs. So the station was initially brought about by the merging of two wholly separate projects, and it ended up becoming a collaboration between five different space agencies. Russia's Roscosmos, the United States' NASA, Canada's CSA, Japan's JAXA, and Europe's ESA. 11. Many Countries Involved so we said that the program consists of five different space agencies, but with the ESA, the total number of countries involved comes to 15. Besides the United States, Russia, Canada, and Japan, the United Kingdom, Norway, Sweden, France, Belgium, Germany, Italy, Switzerland, Denmark, the Netherlands, and Spain are all a part of the International Space Station. The ISS is tied together in complex financial, political, and legal agreements between all of the 15 nations participating, which keeps things organized and gives rights to the different aspects of the station, including crew rotations, responsibilities for resupply, and utilization. 10. It's pretty cozy. With the ISS being so small, there's not all that much room to move around up there. Expeditions are sent to the craft in crews of 2 to 3, and they typically stay up there between 100 and 200 days. There have even, at times, been as many as 13 people being housed on the shuttle at one time. Sounds like a claustrophobic nightmare. Now imagine the size of your apartment or house. No matter how big it is, there are times where it feels just a little too small. Especially if you have to share it with multiple other people. Try living aboard a station that you can't leave in outer space that measures just 357.6 feet long and is crammed with all kinds of essential equipment. It does have a pressurized volume the same size as that of a Boeing 747, 32,333 cubic feet, although the walls, floors, and sometimes ceilings are covered in all kinds of instruments. It's not only hard to become an astronaut, it's apparently hard living as one once you do finally get into space as well, but you sure would have a heck of a view. 9. Hefty Price so when you think about the ISS, you might begin to wonder just how much such a project would cost, right? Well, we will start by telling you that out of everything humankind has ever built, the International Space Station is the most expensive. As of 2015, the project had cost the world around $160 billion. And guess how much of that has been paid by the US? About $100 billion of it. That means that Canada, Europe, Japan, and Russia have only spent a combined $60 billion on the project. You know how we mentioned that the original piece of the station, Zarya, was launched into orbit aboard a Russian rocket and that it's technically Russian? Well, the United States funded it and Russia built it. Does that mean that the US has the biggest claim to the ISS? Not really. Since it's a shared project with shared effort and resources, technically all of the partners own it. 8. Spot the Station did you know that you can actually see the International Space Station as it zips by overhead? That is, if you know where to look. Luckily for us, NASA has a text program that you can sign up for called Spot the Station, and it'll send you a text the day you're supposed to be able to see it at your given location. 
you can also pick your location on their website and it will provide you with the next available viewing times, where in the sky it will appear, where it will disappear, and how long it will be visible. Right now the space station is the third brightest object in the night sky when it appears, although you should be able to catch it in the early morning as well. There is also a live video feed pointing at the Earth's surface when the crew is off duty, so be sure to check out that awesomeness too. 7. Three Squares Astronauts, like many other humans, eat three square meals a day, although their food isn't quite as delicious as Earth food. Because they're in space, all of their food is either dehydrated, canned, or packaged up, so they don't even need a fridge to keep all of their goodies, well, good. When it comes to eating, astronauts don't have to eat around a dining table. In fact, they don't even have to sit while they're eating. All they have to do is make sure they're stabilized, and they'll just float in place once they do so, and then chow down. They do still need to be careful though, and take their time ensuring the meals gets to their mouths, as if they don't, they could get flung across the station due to the lack of gravity. 6. Oxygen so with all of those astronauts making their way to the ISS, how do they get all of the oxygen on board so they can breathe? It's through a process called electrolysis, which occurs when the station's solar panels collect energy, which helps to produce an electrical current that splits water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen gas. It does so using the station's electron oxygen generator, which is what the astronauts in these pictures are working on. Pretty simple stuff if you think about it. All that needs to happen is the H's need to be split from the O's, and there's available oxygen. 5. Staying in shape Now, it's not all work on the ISS. They get breaks and have time to play around as well. But one really important thing all of the astronauts are expected to do is keep in shape. Considering that the human body loses bone and muscle mass when it's in zero gravity, it's required for the crew to work out six days out of the week for at least two and a half hours a day. They have three machines they use to keep themselves in Earth shape, a treadmill, a bicycle, and ARED, the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, which is basically just a weightlifting machine. The thing is, all of these exercise machines have been specially designed to be used in a space environment because regular gym equipment would be utterly useless if astronauts tried to use them in microgravity. They just float in midair, like these oranges. 4. Bathrooms like all humans, astronauts too have to go to the bathroom, and the International Space Station has two of them. One is in Zvezda, a service module containing all of the life support systems, and one is in Tranquility. Both are of Russian design. The astronauts must strap themselves down to the toilet seat, which creates a good seal using spring-loaded restraining bars, and then they can turn a fan on, open a suction hole, and do their thing. Number twos go into their own individual bags, which are then stored inside an aluminum container, and the container is eventually transferred to a Progress spacecraft, which are the crafts that resupply the ISS. Men and women have their own adapter for number ones that connect to the front of the toilet. Where does it go? It gets recycled through the water recovery system and is filtered back into the station's drinking water. 3. The Scent of Space did you know that many astronauts that have been on the ISS or in other places in space have testified to space having a distinctive scent? One astronaut interpreted it as being reminiscent of seared steak, where another said it smells of acrid, of ozone, and is sulfurous. Others have compared it to hot metal, and one said it reminds him of the smell of welding fumes. One thing they all seem to agree on is that space has a smell. It's not just a scentless vacuum like we might assume it to be. Science tells us that these astronauts probably just experience the scent in different ways, but that the smell itself mostly comes from burning hydrocarbons. 2. Space Debris the station orbits along a relatively low altitude and cruises along quite near various types of debris. Not only does it have to compete for space with micrometeoroids, but it also finds itself along roughly the same path as things such as defunct satellites, spent rocket stages, fragments of exploded materials from anti-satellite weapons tests, and much more. Most of the larger debris can be tracked and monitored, and their orbits can be predicted in advance so collisions can be avoided. But the smaller debris can cause more problems as the minuscule pieces can't be tracked, but can still do significant damage because of their kinetic energy. There are many protective measures in place, but it can still be pretty scary to be an astronaut. 
we've learned some pretty amazing things about the International Space Station so far, and we still have just a little more to go. But first we'd like to ask you, if you were an astronaut aboard the station, what would be your favorite part about living there? What would be hard for you? Let us know in the comments down below. 1. Death of a Great as of right now, it's looking as though the International Space Station's missions will come to an end sometime in 2028. What comes after that for the Incredible Station? No one's quite sure at this point. So far, the best option is looking like slowly deorbiting the massive ship by using a modified Russian Progress spacecraft and eventually having it crash land somewhere in a remote ocean location. But there has been talk about trying to extend the mission yet again until 2030, although bills to make that happen failed in 2018. There have also been suggestions about converting it for commercial operations after the government is done with it, but right now, no such plan is in place. Who knows what the future holds for the ISS? We guess that we'll just have to wait and see. If this video shed any light on the International Space Station for you, do us a favor and give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel below or by clicking our logo right here on the screen so that you never miss out on any of our excellent uploads. Also, be sure to check out this next video that we're sure you're going to love.